that it's time for my first hit inspirational stories behind the breakout songs by some of south africa's biggest artists this is what we do on fridays and today is no different it is brought to you by sampra we love the beat and that's why we play we pay to pay to pay to play it yeah i mean otherwise why are we doing what we're doing right and today's guest is somebody who my goodness um you know people say you know form is temporary but class is permanent oh wow <laughs> our guest today has permanent class she's a singer songwriter um and an absolute inspiration to many music lovers and beyond um and she could probably bowl uh, a mean yorker oh. if she really wanted to <laughs> on a good day <laughs> or a nice cover drive her name is Msaki. That's Welcome. Hilarious. <laughs> Why is it hilarious? Just the fact that you know that that I'm a cricket enthusiast. I love cricket so much. And you I played now. I was like, Yo. and you played as well. I used to play. Yeah, I played. I mean, I played growing up. Yep. Just in the streets, and then got roped into a team, and ended up playing for Border Women's in my my province there in the Eastern Cape. But I, it's also because like hockey, tennis, all of those movements are the same, and hand-eye coordination skills. There's nothing sure. new. But yeah, I love being outside and I love, I used to watch cricket with my dad and test matches and go to one days when wow. I was younger, yeah. So do you ever wonder what could have happened had you pursued your career in cricket further? Poverty. No, I'm just <laughs> 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 Women's sports are getting the attention they deserve. It's sure. still not the, the equal, as equal as the male counterparts. It would yeah. have been frustrating. But I also think um, my my adrenaline junkie type of really physical and energetic ways have been channeled into um, other art forms. Um, everybody that grew up with me is surprised that I'm not a, that I didn't end up being a sportswoman and yeah. that I'm a musician. They don't know that side of me at all. Well, that's brilliant because it means you're full of surprises. Um, and and what it also tells us is that your talents are in abundance. Uh, you, you were talking about also just on another point, um, voting uh, just the other day. How did you feel? Um, I mean, it's an interesting time because I, I've got two minds about how people are talking about young people and apathy. I'm also seeing people that want to be part of the story of South Africa. I'm also just interested in this idea that big daddy parent government is going to come and save us all. I'm interested in community. I'm interested in organizing from the ground. So I take it all with a pinch of salt. We, we make our mark and we hold them accountable. But what are we doing in our communities? Sure. The same way that a country has a soul, every city has a soul, every community has a soul. And you can decide what you do with what you know. And if your community is in a position where you can extend grace and and help to, to the surrounding areas and people that are needing your community, then we have a little bit more control, you know. And it's not just looking at the top, but the top should be held accountable. Oh, absolutely. Sure. And, and I'm sitting here thinking, with all the, the following that, you, that you've amassed, uh listening to you speak now i just wonder if politics will ever be <laughs> something that you ever get into no i'm interested in um change from the inside and i'm working on on that internal constitution i'm more interested in you know what that looks like and how you translate to your community i think there are people that are called to lead from the top down yeah that's definitely not me i think the reason why i make music is that i'm interested in people's inner world and i'm interested in my own and I think as long as I'm facing the stuff inside of me, then I'm doing the best that I can um, in terms of my contribution and why I'm here. Which is why I love having you as a guest in studio, because uh, you give that reflective sense in, in the way you have your conversations. But the reality is that your musical journey started somewhere. And at some point in your love for music and even in the way that you were raised, there was a song that came out. It mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily your song, if I were to put it like that. But you were a featured artist um, on a song by Moby Dixon called Love Color Spin. I'm just curious to find out what was running through your veins wow. and your body when you heard that song. Because wow. something happened. I had no idea whatever was being orchestrated was definitely out of my line of sight. Because I was just like a folk musician, just released my first EP in, 23, 2020, in 2013. Yeah. Had my first song starting to like rotate on Metro FM called Infama Ziabon. And... Um, Prior to that, I hadn't been really listening to radio much and was, was listening to a, a Dill and Lutz Top 30 show on a Saturday where my song was number one for a while, like 17 weeks. But wow. this is the song, I think, that brought me onto the national consciousness Sure. because of how much we love House. Yeah. And, and I think Moby at that time had really been pushing oh, yeah. for a yeah. while yeah. and he had, you know, a, a kind of access to the hearts of South Africa, you know, and he had been and releasing beautiful music before. 
People remember different things about yeah. the moment the song was recorded. Yeah. Uh, some remember what they were wearing. Some remember what was happening in their lives at okay. the time. What What is it for you that you remember <laughs> in the moment when this song was recorded? What do you remember? This is where I have to give full credit to Movie again. I was not interested in making house. I was a house fan. Like I'd been collecting like DJ Bubbles and 45 BPM. Wow, well, that, that's proper. Masters at work. Oh yeah, yeah. Really interested in like jazz, the kind of not jazz, but like really melodic and instrumental house. Sure. Um, was a fan of Soul Candy, but I'd not seen myself as a house musician. Wow. And Moby had the vision. He saw me. He came to one of my shows at this tiny little theater called the Arts Theater in East London, where I'd been organizing gigs and was part of like the gigging community, but also part of you know, there's always an open mic session in a yeah. small town. Yeah. yeah there was a where Zahara actually ended up being discovered it was an extension of that community Wow! in East London, yeah. So Umo B came to watch me and then he was like, listen, we were we had gone to high school together. We oh. were in a brother-sister school. Right. And I just remember him being like this inconsequential shy guy. You know, now he's this big time producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was always sweet though. We were friends in high school, but not, you know. So he pulled me aside and he's like, listen, man, you can sing. You've got something going on. I'm like, yeah, I'm working on it. I'm busy <laughs> doing my own thing. I'm going to be like, you know, a sure. folk musician. And he's like, come to the studio. And he pestered me and started coming to all my shows. Wow. So, that so he day, stalked you as a way of convincing you to get into the studio. He just kept coming to the shows. <laughs> and he was part of the community in East London, but he had been pushing his career as a musician, sure. coming to Joburg a lot. Um, he was like, hey, man, like, catch a wake up, come to the studio. And I was like, okay, you know what, to get him off my back, straight after a show, I took my little guitar and I went to his studio, which was on the outskirts of East London, right. on the way to the airport, and literally just like rumbled a draft uh, SMS off my phone, that's something I'd written like another day watching at the beach, you know? Yeah. Because East London is super chilled and we're never in a hurry. <laughs> I go <laughs> I go to his movie studio and I have 15 minutes because I also have a curfew. I live with my parents. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So you need to be back home. <laughs> and here's this guy home. saying, let's, let's. Yeah, I need to be back home. I need to be back home. And also my parents don't really trust this art thing that I'm trying. I'm a, I'm a law school dropout. They're like, okay, Kawen's a sport. And now you're rolling with the DJ. No, I'm, I, 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 I'm not yeah, coming yeah. back on time. I'm like, it's midnight, bro. I'm, yeah. st I'm panicking. Yeah. And I do one take and I'm gone. One take. I don't even think about what it is that I'm singing. The beat is nice. I'm like, okay, this guy's musical. Cool. I sing one take and I bounce. Moby edited. He found a chorus in something I sang. Literally, like, you know, I had structure because what I'd written was a poem. Sure. You know, so there was a stanza life to it. Yeah. But essentially, I didn't recognize what he did. At the that's end of the day, the incredible. way that he shaped it, that's him as a producer and him having a good ear. I did leave something with a semblance of a chorus, which is what it became. Yeah. But I didn't put it together like so that. So one take is all it took and you were out of there. I think it's just not taking yourself too seriously because you don't know. You know, it's also an ignorance thing. I'm like, it's a new space. I, I'm, sure. I'm not really a house recording artist, but music is music. Give me two chords and I'm ready to go, you know. And the rest is history because since then, there have been more hits coming out. Um, across different genres, you know, albums even as recently as now, etc. Have you ever made music with somebody that you just don't connect with at all and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't spend an hour with this person on a flight to Durban from Joburg? Oh man, there's not a lot of people like that at all. <laughs> but I did learn my lesson when I think I went into a recording session where there was no relationship base. Um, and I realized that's not for me because collaboration for me is really sacred. What song was that? I, I don't remember. Did I don't it think it made out? it out. Yeah, it, it, would, <laughs> it wouldn't have made it out. <laughs> it wouldn't have made it out. Uh, uh, speaking of, of how you make music, tell me about um, this thing of you spending time in LA, in the US, um, and the importance of that in how you write your music. What, what's the importance of that? It's, it's simple. I've fallen in love with songwriting. And uh, that naturally led me to a place uh, where there's infrastructure for it to be a career. And the reason why I'm not on stage is because I have a, a full career as a songwriter and I've been building that. Um, and the one thing I do every day or one thing I do, I'm, I'm more of a writer than I'm a performer. That's why I can be away and still be fine because wow. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the thing that I'm, you know, that comes naturally to Who do you me. write for? Lots of different people at this point, like a lot of things are in pitch, but uh, you know, there there's like A&R teams that are looking and the A&R teams that... Um, are understanding what music the artist is 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 making. I mean, sure. I submit for everyone, and it's just one of those things. It's like one day the the, the song will click. I've just been submitting some tracks now for Rihanna's new album. What? Been re, um, it's submitting. I mean, another no, person still. that I another person that I, I see a lot in LA is Manana. 
Oh yeah. Give me someone as an amazing writer. He's just gotten a song on Usher's pro, uh, Usher's album. I also submitted for that album. I submitted for Drake's album. Damn. I keep, you know, it's like you keep trying, but there's also other matches that are not necessarily the ones that are, you know, that that everybody knows. Sure. But I love writing for other artists. I have a surplus of songs, so I want to find, um, I want to find their them homes. You know, I don't have to sing every song I've written. The ones that I have to sing myself, I know, but the ones that I have to give away, I give away. Yeah, they often say there's more from where that came from. Yeah. So with you, that's definitely the case, especially when we look at how much hit music that you've put out, um, whether as a featured artist or songs that are inherently yours. Um, so then, how were you able to make a living out of music? Um, and how do you continue being able to do that? My journey has been interesting. I think just being interested in the whole value chain of the music system and wanting to protect the soul of the song from when I've received it alone and from how people receive it in their homes has made me very curious about the steps that it moves through from, you know, how it's dressed, how it's marketed, how it's, you know, and, and, and it's made, I've gone and learned about that as a businesswoman. So I've had an, I've been an independent artist releasing my own music um, since 2013. Sure. And so uh, the reason why it makes sense for me is because I, you know, even if it's, even if it's, um, I kind of have the pie, it, and and now that the pie is getting more work, it means that it becomes more of a passive income. But um, I own most of the, the all the music that I've made, so Beautiful. that's why it, it, it makes sense for me numbers wise. Now that my my reach has grown, um, not to say that you know there are other people that will will sign and 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 that will make them more money or that sure. will give them support because the the company that they align with really gets their message yes. out there yes. and then whatever cut of the pie they have really makes sense for them. For me, it was really, I needed to grow slowly and it's starting to make a lot of sense now. Sure. Um, and, and I'm able to run my business. She's in control and she's measured. Her name is Msaki. Let's go to the line. Chris, welcome. Hey Mo, how are you? Very well, thanks for holding. Msaki's here, go for it. Hey, uh, hey. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's Chris, Chris finds me everywhere. <laughs> Whether, <laughs> any radio station, Chris will find me. Hi, Chris. How are you doing, my friend? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm so glad that you're on air. You know, when I heard you, I literally pumped up the volume. I'm like, I'm going to call. Most of you must send WhatsApp. I'm calling. <laughs> thank you, Chris. My girl. I just want to thank you for healing us through music and oh, tell man. you that we love you so much. Thank you, Chris. This means a lot. I Chris has become a friend, but he's just a person who's not m missed any show that I've had, and I know I know him by coming to support the music and and coming to the shows. That's so, how so how far has he followed you uh, in terms from, of your shows? From the beginning, to, uh, he was probably at the last one. He came to the Delta Love Experience, I'm sure. Where was that? It was um, at the base. It was at Lyric Theatre. Right, right, right. Chris, you were there, ne? Yeah, I think he's he's gone now. Is but he gone? so basically, he follows but every, you everywhere. Every, every, beautiful. Yeah, and we've become friends over the years just because of your support. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Let's go to Catherine. Catherine. Uh, no. Oh, that's somebody else. All right, we've got a competition there. So I'm getting my wires crossed. Um, Msaki, I'm out of time. But listen. Uh, oh man. I know, right? Uh, you're one of those artists who locally are extremely respected. You're acclaimed, and people respect your music. I mean, I don't know how you do it, but people respect your music. So keep that because it's clearly working. And it seems as if internationally there are a lot of good movements as you've highlighted. So all we can do is support you fully and wish you all of the best. Um, do more interviews because you just said when we started that you don't do a lot of these. Um, I, I don't know why. <laughs> you don't, I because can you're tell you. I can tell you. <laughs> well, well, tell me why as we wrap it up because you, yeah. you have beautiful stories. Thank you. I've, been, I've, I've got beautiful stories because I feel very blessed. Even sure. that serendipitous moment with Moby thrusted me into the consciousness of South African producers. Yeah. And that's taken my trajectory a certain way. I, that was not my plan, you know? Sure. So there's something a, a greater at play here. And this is why I'm submitting to this t period of rest. And I need this hiatus to recalibrate what the future looks like for me. So people can bear with me and know that even if maybe I start, started the hiatus because I was hurt, I'm actually doing it because I really care about this longevity story and so yeah even though i'm not going to be on stage much this year i'm thinking of everyone i'm writing songs i'm releasing a lot of music we made a lot of music in the last couple of years sure. and my love is with them beautiful so we can say all is well well all is well, well. all is well 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 <laughs> <laughs> thank you mo all right Musaki, you're awesome thank you so much for joining us appreciate it yeah.